Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this is a video I've been trying to make for a long time, but things just kept on happening. But I'm finally ready and able to make this video. So today I just really wanted to share with you all my experience taking the OPI or the oral proficiency interview, which is just another one of those speaking tests that test your oral proficiency. So if you see me looking down at my phone, it's because I've just taken some notes so I can make sure I say everything that I wanted to say. So first, I'm just going to start with my experience taking the test, then I'll go into some tips I have if you want to take the same test or really any speaking proficiency test. So first, I did take the computerized version, so I took the oral proficiency interview computerized version, and that just means I was able to do it from the comfort of my home. I didn't have to go to some testing site to do it, but that does not mean that it was an easy, it was an easier experience. I had a proctor watching me, so I had to turn my camera on on my computer and show that my floors were completely clear, that my walls were completely clear, and I even had to get up and show myself walking with my phone to a table and putting my phone on that table and walking back to my chair so they could make sure that my, my phone was not within arm's reach. Then I had to give them permission to use my computer so that they could turn off a bunch of the features of my computer. That way I wasn't able to look up any words or go on the internet. It was very secure, so you will not be able to cheat on this test. After that, I was shown a screen with a bunch of multiple choice options about different hobbies and activities that I like. For example, if I was interested in traveling, I had to say, I had to mark if it was international or domestic for business or for leisure. What kind of sports do I like to do? What kind of activities do I like to do? Like going to the beach or going to the movies, spending time with friends. There was just a very long list of things that I had to click through and I had to click a certain amount and I think that's because for the computerized version you're not talking to a real person you're talking to this kind of artificial intelligence but they want to make sure that the test isn't the same for everyone so if you're taking the test and the person right next to you was taking the same test you should not be asked the same questions. And it did, in a way, feel like a conversation. It didn't feel too weird. Once the test started, it began with a warm-up, and I had to just talk about myself. So you get the question or prompt in the target language, the language that you're studying, and then you have to respond, of course, in that language. And you have a certain amount of time to answer each question. So maybe about 50 to 55 seconds. And you really want to make sure that you can say as much as you can in the time that you're given so that the people that rate your audio sample can get a really good feel for what your language level is. Some of the questions I was asked were, what do you usually do on a typical day? Tell me about the best experience you had with your best friend. Tell me about something exciting that happened in a place you visited as a child. And there was also this kind of role play scenario. I was told that I need a car and I had to ask questions to get the cheapest car that I can for one week. And a follow up to that was now they realize the, per the permit that I have isn't for the country that I'm visiting. So I need to figure out another way to get to the place that I'm trying to go for the next week. So along with just answering questions about my own experiences and the things that are going on in my life, I was thrown into this role play scenario. So they wanted to also test if I could handle myself if a random situation came up. If, if you don't understand what someone's saying, you can just ask them to repeat the question again and again if you need to. For the test, you're only able to have the artificial intelligence person repeat the question one time. So you really do need to make sure that you're paying attention. The entire test took about 20 to 25 minutes and I was definitely glad when it was over. So that was pretty much my overall experience taking the OPI, the oral proficiency interview. So now I just want to give you my three main tips for preparing for that test or really any speaking test. The first one is talk a lot. And if you don't have someone that you can talk to in your area, you can always just talk to yourself. 
Of course, you can also go on different websites and chat with people, but even if you can't do but if you can't do that either, talk to yourself. There would be days where I'd be walking back from class to my apartment and I would talk about what I did during the day, what I have to do later, what I need to do later, what my plans were for the weekend, just any kind of topic that I thought would be realistic or things that I could see myself talking about with another person. That kind of leads me into my second tip. Make sure that if there is a word that you know in your native language but you just can't think of what it is in your target language or the language that you're studying, make sure that you write it down and look it up so that you have a chance to use that word later. For example, during my time preparing for this test, I didn't look for a bunch of random vocabulary words and try to memorize them because I wasn't just trying to increase my vocabulary with a bunch of words I might never use. Instead, when I was talking to myself, if I wanted to say something but I just couldn't think of the word in Spanish, I would write that down because then I knew that was a word I actually wanted to use and know for the future. I wouldn't need to know how to say the word clown, but I might need to know how to say the word homework or busy or work. Those are words that I would actually be using every day that I use in English, so I figure I should know that word in Spanish, at least before I learn the word for clown. My last tip is know what the test you're taking is testing. For example, when taking the oral proficiency interview, I already knew that they were going to ask me something related to my daily routine. I already knew that they were going to ask me to be in some kind of role play scenario because on their website they have a PDF that basically tells you what to expect. There are three main levels, novice, intermediate, and advanced. And for each of those levels, the PDF tells you what kind of questions are expected of you. I don't believe you're expected to know the past tense if you want to test to see if you're in the novice range of oral proficiency, but you do need to know the past tense if you want to try to be at the advanced range. You need to know how to talk about your daily routine if, you're in, if you want to be in the intermediate range, and you need to be able to handle an, an unexpected complication such as trying to rent a car if you want to be in the advanced range. In the PDF, it gives you a series of examples for what they're looking for for each level, and I'll make sure to link that down below and include an image somewhere on the screen so that you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. I hope that was helpful and useful. If there's anything else you would like to know about my experience or how to prepare for a speaking exam, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.